it sounds good there, but when you're in the stadium, you couldn't hear a thing. <laughs> There's so much screaming. The Beatles invaded, invaded uh, New Orleans City Park Stadium 55 years ago today. We call it Tad Gormley Stadium now. The concert remains a moment etched in the memory of any of the 12,000 or so people who were there. Beatlemania swept over New Orleans and the rest of the country in September of 64 when the band stopped in New Orleans as part of their 25-city first U.S. tour. Attorney and Beatles fan Stephen Landry has written a new book about that concert called Beatles Day in New Orleans. And he's here with us this morning. I, I, I'm about halfway through your book now, and it is excellent. It's very well researched, and especially on the history that New Orleans played and New Orleans artists played in the making of the Beatles. Oh, uh, the Beatles were huge New Orleans rhythm and blues fans. Oh, they, yeah. They adored Fats Domino. He was one of their idols. Well, and, it's uh, funny because the first time I did an interview with Fats Domino, I said, well, you got to meet the Beatles. And he goes, no, the Beatles got to meet me. Yeah. And that's how they felt. That's exactly how they felt. Uh, they, you know, they, they got the music in Liverpool from New Orleans. They were, you know, the, New Orleans and Liverpool were both big seaports. And so they yeah. were getting a lot of the music from New Orleans that way. Yeah. And, and a lot of the British invasion musicians were, were in love with rhythm and blues and, and the music that, that, uh, that was coming, especially out of New Orleans. Correct. Yes, and actually, the uh, the last song of the Beatles set that they played on that tour was uh, Little Richard's Long Tall Sally, which was recorded here in New Orleans, just down the street from where we're sitting. At, with, with Cosmo Matassas. Cosmo Cosmo Matassas uh, studio. That's correct. And and uh, what made you go ahead and, and do such research on this? I, I mean, I know you're a Beatles fan, but. I mean, this It really wasn't for money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love music, love the Beatles, always love the Beatles, and, the, and I love history. And there's so much history. Uh, you know, people don't realize that New Orleans was where, they called it rhythm and blues in the late 40s and the yeah. early 50s, but it was, it was really born here. It was called rhythm and blues. It was mostly black artists that were producing it. But it was, ju it was it, this is where it all started. Well, even the, rock the Beatles and roll, knew that. Even the Rock and Roll Music Hall of Fame arguably says the first rock and roll song was The Fat Man by, by uh, uh, Dave Bartholomew and, and Fats Domino. That's correct. Uh, although, although there are other people that argue, you know, there, there was rhythm and blues and, and, and uh, you know, rock and roll before that. But I mean, it, uh, you know, who's to say? But I always say that the first rock and roll song was, was The Fat Man. And, and, you know, Clarence Frogman Henry uh, opened for the Beatles. That's correct. And I thought I knew a lot about Clarence. Your book just sheds so much more history on him. He's a great guy great guy and uh, a very uh, a worthy ambassador of New Orleans uh, rhythm and blues really good guy and and was there anything about about the history that you were un, uh, you know uh, uh, uncovering that kind of surprised you about the influence yes it did because like I said I was always a big uh, Beatles fan growing up in Baton Rouge I get WNOE and WCHX AM stations when I grew up and I listened to all these this music coming from New Orleans and but I didn't realize until I read a biography of Fat Stomato after Katrina how much influence and I didn't know the music was recorded here in New Orleans yeah uh, all that great music and so it just got me incredibly fascinated with the, the whole history of it and that's why so many great artists when they come here it's kind of like coming to Mecca and that's why we have so many new artists coming down because they know this is where it's happening that's right and um, you know it's uh, the place where some of these historic uh, recordings were made is now a laundrette yeah uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a designated, the, there's a plaque on the wall, right. and it's designated as a, uh, ro uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is designated as a historic place. All right, but a co couple of quick facts about, about the, uh, uh, the City Park Stadium concert. Mm -hmm. the tickets for $5? That's right. <laughs> and and uh, what were like a little more than 12,000 people there, although you probably had 100,000 people say they were there. That's right. Right. And, and, you and know, they only played a half an hour. They only played a half hour, 11 songs, and uh, you know, midway through the concert, you know, this was the height of Beatlemania, and midway through the concert, you know, the fans were sitting in the stands, they were far away from the, the stage on the football field, and they decided to put their binoculars down and start running towards the stage. Yeah. And so chaos broke out. Uh, there was about 225 uh, policemen and security people there, and they had their hands full. They needed every one of them. And uh, it became a, a kind of a comical uh, display yeah. of open field running and tackling between the, the police and the girl, mostly girl, uh, yeah. Beatles and, fans. And, and the Beatles <laughs> thought that they could have a day off in New Orleans and travel around. That couldn't happen. I mean, there's so much history, but it's a great book, a great read if you like anything about the Beatles. Uh, pick up a copy of this book. Stephen will be talking about 
and signing his book at 6 o'clock tonight at Octavia Books Uptown and Saturday afternoon at Barnes & Noble in Metairie. The book is available at local bookstores from Pelican Publishing. It really is a good read, especially if you're a Beatles fan. We have a link to Stephen's website on our website at WWLTV.com. Dave?